Would you believe that I found this amazing sewing cabinet from the thrift store for $40? It's been 10 years this thing has been sitting in my home and I have been wanting to redo it, whether with paint or with stain. I could not decide. I didn't want to cover up this amazing oak veneer. I wanted to leave some of that grain, but I also didn't want to have it be this really outdated looking piece of furniture. So guess what? Today we are going to make it over so that you can still see this amazing green, but it's gonna have some color. Can you guess what color? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's jump into this project. Today it's being sponsored by Minwax. We use some of their products that I picked up from Lowe's and you can find all of the details in the blog post down below with all the products that I used. So the first step was to remove the tops, remove the drawers, everything that can be removed so that we can flip this thing from side to side to refinish each of the sides of the sewing cabinet. Here's a little tip. You saw me put some of these hardware pieces into a plastic baggie very, very important. I tend to lose this stuff very easily. So if you put it in a baggie, you're more likely to keep all the pieces together. The next step was to strip as much of the old finish off of this sewing cabinet as possible. So I did put on a couple coats of stripper, allowed it to sit for about an hour or two, and then I removed all of that nasty old top coat and did some sanding. Now the reason why I did this is because the product that we're using is the Minwax Wood Finish Water-Based Solid Color Stain. So this actually provides color like paint, but it keeps the wood grain visible so that you can actually see the texture. And with oak, I mean, oak is amazing because it has this deep grain in the wood. And that's what we want to uncover because we want a little color, but we want to highlight that grain as well. So all of that existing finish has to come off. And the easiest way to do that is just to use a paint scraper and be very careful. You don't want to gouge your wood and have something to put this into like an old box or a milk carton or something and be sure to discard of it according to your local laws and regulations. So once everything was stripped down, we had to clean up the wood. You can use some steel wool here with maybe some mineral spirits. Again, just make sure that you clean everything up and let it dry out properly. And this includes the rags that you're using. Those can be uh, combustible. So make sure that everything lies flat, allow it to dry before you throw those cloths in the trash. Once my wood was clean, it was time to go over it with the orbital sander. I love sanding wood before I stain it. I know that there's some professionals that say, well, you may not even have to sand it, but I love sanding it because you see here that it does do a pretty good job of getting it back to as raw of wood as possible. And once I did that, I knew that whatever color stain that I was putting on this would not be interfering with whatever color was underneath from the existing stain. And if you don't want to use chemical stripper, you can actually just use an orbital sander to sand your furniture and it'll take a little bit longer because you're going through multiple layers, but it's possible. I've refinished a lot of furniture this way. Just make sure that you're using a mask and wipe down all the sawdust before you're ready to move on to the next step. Now I've gotten into the habit of using pre-stained wood conditioner on any project that I'm staining. And the reason why is because if you don't, there's certain woods that will just look blotchy, right? Especially pine, birch, maple, it just leaves these blotchy parts and it looks pretty bad. So I've gotten into the habit of using this for any wood that I'm staining, including this. Even though it's a color stain, it's kind of like paint, I'm still gonna use it because I want good results. You'll leave it on there for probably two or three minutes. Don't let it dry on the surface wipe it off in the direction of the grain. And then once it dries, in about 30 minutes, you're gonna want to use some fine sandpaper, which is like 220, and just go over it very lightly in the direction of the grain. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I chose pink. I love pink furniture. I just feel it just looks amazing in my shed. And some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna look at this and say, why did she choose pink? But that's what I love about the solid color stain finishes is that you can actually choose over 200 colors to mix with this. So if you like black, well, you can mix this with black and get a black finish. Or maybe you like orange, choose whatever color you want. But for me, it's definitely pink. Now you'll see here that after applying it with the paintbrush, I'm gonna smooth it out with the applicator. This is important because not only does it remove the excess, but it gives you this nice smooth finish. And then you're still able to see the grain that classic oak grain is still visible. I'll show you in a moment how I'm gonna highlight this. There's no brush strokes and it looks really, really good on the wood. So I like that I've got some color to the wood, but it still looks like wood. It's not completely covered up. 
So now I need to do the doors. And for this part, I really wasn't sure if I was going to do the entire door pink or if I wanted to do something visually interesting on those insets. Well, you know how we do here at Thrift Diving. If I can make it look even more unique, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and sometimes you don't know what you're going to do when you start a project. And that's what I try to tell people. When you start a project, you may not have the end in mind, but once you get started, you're able to come up with creative ideas. And sometimes you already have the material on hand to take a project from kind of ordinary to amazing. And that's what happened with this project. I actually happened to have this paper already in my stash and it looked amazing. So if you're cutting paper for inset to do some decoupage, make sure you've got something like a rotary cutter, a mat so you can get really straight cuts, a ruler, something that's going to allow you to make a really good piece that's going to fit that, that spot. And once you know that you've got a good sizing for your paper, then you'll take the decoupage, you'll spread that out with a paintbrush, and you want to make sure that you have all of that area completely covered. Don't overdo it, but just make sure it's thoroughly covered. Okay, so here's what I did first, and I would actually recommend not to do this. I'm putting it into position and I'm just using my hand first to adhere it. Then I'm going over it with the brayer. And I found doing it this way, there was a little bit more bubbles that I captured. So I did it this way instead. Instead of putting the entire thing in place with my hand, use the brayer and slowly allow that paper to fall into place as you're using the brayer. This works very well, plus a credit card going into those corners, smoothing everything out. I found that this was the best method and it looked very, very good, but not just looked good, it felt good. All right, so for the drawers, I did use a little bit of sandpaper on those, wiped away any of the dust, and we were gonna cover this with another color. Isn't this beautiful? I just love this color. I didn't want this for the entire sewing cabinet, but I thought this was a great color and surprisingly, it matched the paper. <laughs> it's just amazing how that worked out. So after I did one or two coats of this beautiful color, I wanted to protect it because I've got sewing things that are gonna go in here. So I did two coats of the Minwax Polycrylic and that worked great for protecting the inside of those drawers. So now it was time to do the paper on the outside of the drawers. I love pretty paper on the drawers, but here's how you do it properly. Okay, put your decoupage, cut your paper a little bigger than the drawer. Don't try to do the exact measurement. It's not gonna work here. So once you have this, little bigger than the drawer, you can trim it down if needed, but then you're gonna take some sandpaper, like let's say 150 grit is perfect. You're gonna take that at a 45 degree angle and you're just going to run it across the edge of that paper. And when you do that, it's gonna score the paper. It's gonna actually start to tear off, but it's gonna give you the cleanest line you could ever get than trying to cut it exactly the size of your drawer. It's never gonna work that way. <laughs> This is how you get clean lines. And if you do this, I can guarantee every single time it's going to work and it's gonna look fabulous. Use your brayer, make sure that you've got a good adhesion around those corners. Later, we will do some decoupage on top, you'll see. But for now, I just let that dry. I did decoupage on the inside of the doors and it wasn't quite long enough, so I had to just do a little patch at the bottom. Not a big deal, but I treated this the same way as the drawers using the sandpaper to get a clean edge, and it worked beautifully. Now, I did use sandpaper on the interior of this sewing cabinet as well. Typically, if I'm using furniture paint, I don't sand, but this is a color stain. It's a little different, so I wanted to make sure that it was going to adhere. And then after two coats, I let it dry. It takes about only one hour to dry, and I used two coats of the polycrylic in order to give it a nice hard finish. I did paint the interior of that bottom, because there was no drawer there. But the other two, I just put some painter's tape there. I didn't paint the entire thing. So for the hardware, I use gold paint. And yes, you can use spray paint on screws. I wanted all the hardware to match and I had some thick paper, made that into a square, put those screws in, in there to hold them and just spray painted them. <laughs> and it looks fantastic. So while that was drying, I finished the top and the sides the exact same way that I did the other parts of the sewing cabinet, added a thin coat, used the applicator to pull off the excess color stain, and then it was time for the magic to happen. We were going to color this grain white. And this is my favorite thing about working with oak because you have this beautiful grain. You don't wanna cover that up. And 
that's what I like about the color stain is that it's thin enough that you have color, but you still have this beautiful green. So what I did here was I used liming wax, but you can also use the Min Wax Highlighting Green Wax, and it'll do the same thing. It'll highlight the green of the wood, but you're going against the green and you're pushing it into that void. So what happens is after three to five minutes, you would go back over it with a cloth and wipe away all the excess. What I find that works well is after about three to five minutes of the white wax drying, then you would go back over it with a clear wax because what can happen is, especially with the liming wax, it can look hazy, right? Like as you're trying to buff it out, it can look hazy. But if you go over it with a clear wax, it removes some of that haze, but leaves the white wax in the grain. And I think that's the beauty of oak, that you can still have and enjoy the look of wood, but have that color and that white grain accent. I had a lot of paper left over, so I thought, you know what would be really great is to cut it into strips and then just apply it to places around the sewing cabinet. So I decided to do it on some of the edges and I decoupaged it the same way that I did the drawers. I used the brayer to get out any bubbles and also used the sandpaper to get part of those edges off so that it looks clean with a nice clean edge. I did the same for the top, you know, those tops that, well, the left side and the right side both open up to create a larger sewing desk. So those edges, all four sides, got the special treatment <laughs> and it looked great. And I also did it on the front as well. And again, same process, apply it, make sure you're cutting it slightly bigger. Again, you're not gonna try to cut this exactly at the right size. It doesn't happen, it just doesn't work well. So cut it a little bigger and then use your sandpaper to remove that edge so you get a clean, crisp edge. I also found something else. <laughs> you know, at the thrift store, I love finding things. So this little stool, it was in good condition. It had vintage wheels. I just thought it was awesome. So I sanded it down and just put a coat of clear wax on it. I didn't want to paint it or anything. I didn't want to lose its value if it was really vintage. <laughs> the sewing cabinet, I'm okay with painting that, but everything else, no, not on the not on the stool. All right, so you definitely want to make sure you're not skipping this step when you're decoupaging. Cover that paper with a coat of the decoupage. This will help to protect it so that you don't have any spills, anything that could warp that paper. This creates a protective layer over top of it. And I really like the way this looks when it dries. I use the matte, I don't like the glossy. So I added the hardware and then let's take a look at how this looked before. This is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like now. And I realized that pink furniture and florals, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm discovering the more projects that I do, it really is my cup of tea. I love pink and I love floral and I think it just makes a room feel so much more lighter and fresher and airier. And that's the look that I'm going for in my she shed. I'm still trying to pull that space together, but I, I have a clear vision of where I'm going <laughs> using all of these beautiful colors. So the thing that I really liked about this is being able to maintain that wood texture. You know, as I mentioned before, the more projects that I do, I still love color but I really love and appreciate the beauty of wood, especially oak, because it has such of a deep grain that you can highlight and really give that wood some texture, but you still want a little bit of color, right? Like I don't want everything in my shed to be these wood tones. So I was able to achieve that with the Minwax wood finishes and I loved it, it turned out great. Now in terms of cost, I can't tell you exactly how much I paid because I had some of these materials, like the paper, I already had that on hand. And that's why I think it's so important to build up your DIY toolbox with tools and materials because the more projects that you do, the more you're gonna find that you have a use for things, even if you don't know what you're gonna use it for at that moment, or sometimes you buy materials and you only use part of it, but you can still use the other part for more projects. So it does lower your cost over time. So I hope that you enjoyed this project. You can find the blog post down below that has all the tools and materials and links for everything that I used in this video. And also you can go to minwax.com for more information on the Minwax wood finishes. And they sponsored this. So a big thanks to them for allowing me to complete this for my she shed. So if you have any questions, leave it down below in the comments and I will see you next video.